Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. Check this out. Old square cut GM key with the round cut door key. Look at there. These things go to a 1985 Chevrolet El Camino, which is it was a pickup truck. No Diag. Uh, we're gonna parts cannon this thing. Uh oh, need the door key here. Unlocking the auto. Yeah, we're going to parts cannon this thing. Uh, it's got something going on under the hood. Uh, customer states that on occasion it will uh, it'll die and not restart once hot. And uh, they don't know if it's their ignition system. Yeah, I think it's got an aftermarket system. Or, uh, or if there's a problem with the distributor. What we want to do is parts cannon a, a JEGS component uh, into the engine. And uh, I'm going to give it back to them. If uh, this does not fix the problem, starting the engine, they're going to attempt uh, to have the uh, ignition module warranted. I think it's got an MSD. Anyway, this thing has got, either it's rolled over or those are original 91,167.15 miles on the odometer. Windows down, it's hot in here. All right, let's go ahead and nose this into the shop. We're gonna pop in the hood and uh, unbox our components in the in the box here and uh, see how this works out. Uh oh, truck coming, look out. Let's get out of here. Carbureted. Gotta keep it carbureted. Ding, 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 ding. Look, I cleaned. Yeah, we're gonna nose this in right here behind this Nissan. I don't think I need, uh, need a lift for what we're about to do. Parking the auto, powering down. And of course, popping the hood. All right, let's see what we've got to be working with under here. My information source tells me this is a uh, five liter. I think that's a 305 V8. And survey says, I can't tell from here, but it's either a 305 or 350. Hmm, nice and shiny. We've got some aluminum valve covers, aluminum intake. That looks like a, I've never heard of that before, Fit Tech carburetor in there. It's kind of cool. Uh, there's our distributing unit. That's uh, that's the unit in question right there, I think. Let's, uh, let's hop into the cabin one more time, fetch that box, unbox it, and see what we have in the box. It's from Jags. Not sponsored, that's just what the box says. Let's see what we have here in our mystery box. Now, if my recollection of the conversation is accurate, this is a complete distributor unit. I believe it has a coil already installed, and it does. It's our vacuum advance. Okay. Come here. Shiny. We like shiny. This is a gear-driven distributor. It actually runs off of a gear on the back of the camshaft. So the timing chain runs the cam, and then the cam runs the distributor, and uh, that is how ignition timing is achieved. Very cool. Put that guy right there. Anything else in the box that's a negatory? Let's go back to the vehicular module and uh, see what we can do about pulling this distributor out. Okay, first things first, we need to lose the wing nut on the air cleaner. Pop that guy off. Okie doke, so the first thing I need to do here is pop a couple of these ignition wires off. We're just going to do the one side. I'll keep them in order. Here we go, pop that guy off. This one over here, we'll just stick that one off to that side. Now, I can undo the little clasps that hold the cap to the distributor base. And those are kind of hard to get to, especially in the back. You gotta push them down, rotate them left, and there's just a hook on the bottom of it. It's like a spring-loaded little hook thing. You have to unload it and then rotate it. You need a longer screwdriver, and then the, uh, the cap will come off. All right, so we got three of those things. Let's get uh, let's get number four out of there. I can't really see. There we go. That one's disconnected. Now our cap is loose. You know, I, I don't exactly have the space that I thought I was gonna have, so I'm gonna have to actually remove uh, all of these, uh, all these wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark them. They're not in the correct order. 
but I'm just marking them from number one all the way around to eight. So this is gonna be seven. I'm not marking firing order. I'm just marking, like I said, the way that they go around. That's two, which we can't tell anymore. There we go. We'll do this. That one can be three. This one can be four. This one can be five. I'll mark that with an X for five. Or a V. V is five. Roman numerals. There we go. And then this one can be six. V1. Uh -huh. That's confusing, isn't it? There. I'll wash the white out off when I'm done. Now I can pull all the plugs, or all the plug wires rather. The reason I need to remove this cap is because I need to know which way the uh, rotor button is pointed. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. Unplug that, whatever that was. See our rotor button right here? That is pointing in this direction. So when I pull this distributor out, because this unit is geared, it's gonna actually rotate slightly. So I need to reference this uh, rotor button in its position so when I drop the new one in there, theoretically it will still be in time and I would not have adjusted anything. So what I will do next is just put a little bit of white out right where that rotor button is pointed, right here. And now I know when I install the new one where it has to be referenced to. Fun little trick. Okay, now I can disconnect my uh, my vacuum line right here for the vacuum advance. Let's just unplug that little guy. Come off. There we go. And there's one wire. Should be one more wire connecting this thing somewhere. Where is it? Am I touching it? I can't tell. All right, now is where it gets interesting. The, uh, the hold down for this distributor is actually going to be located right down here there's like a there's a bolt that goes into the intake and then there's like a little clamp thing with two fingers that rests on a lip that's on that distributor shaft and as you can see we can't get a tool in there we can't get a wrench in there can't get a socket in there there's really nothing we can get in there except for a distributor wrench with this huge offset so what we do is we sneak this around the back get it over that uh that little bolt down there. Let me see if I can't get some light in so you can see. There we go. And then I can attempt to crack that thing loose. There we go. It turned a little bit. And once I can get that loose, it'll turn. There we go. The unit turned. And I should be able to reach in and pull that thing loose and get it all apart. Let's see, I think can rotate that unit and get in there with the fingers and pull that bolt and that little clasp out. And then once that little clasp is gone, the entire unit will lift up and become free. And then I can drop the new one into place. Come on. And I also have the base of the distributor marked uh, right here. So I know, I know where everything is referenced and I'm gonna put it back exactly where it's referenced. Uh, once that's done, I can drive it and make sure that timing feels good. There's our bolt. And here is the little clamp thing. See that right there? There we go. Okay, coming up. See how that, uh, that rotor button turns as I lift? That's the unit sliding over the gears on the camshaft. So we now know that when I go to reinstall this, this rotor button needs to point like right over here and then end up pointing right here. If it's wrong, I just have to pull it back out and clock it again to uh, get the gears to line up properly. Come here, distributor. There she is. Okay, to the bench, let us compare units. Okie dokes. Let's go ahead and pull the cap off of the new unit here. We'll just pop these little clips out, pull that guy off, and then again, we get a close-up of those little uh, little hooks right there. Screwdriver in, push it down, is it spring-loaded? 
and it slides right off, see that? And then a repeat. Come here, you, get in there. Beautiful. That's two, number three, and, oh, there's number four, it's hiding out. Just like so. Pull our cat back off, set that aside. Do we have a different design here? No, no, that's all the same. Looks good. It is good, must be good. Okay, let's take this unit over to our car, truck. Truck car, what is it? Is it a truck or is it a car? What do you guys think? The feline canine, little cat dog, cat dog. Comment section down below. Anyway, let's take this over to the vehicle and get this thing dropped into place and uh, reinstalled. Okay, so I toss a little bit of grease on the gear here. That way it doesn't run dry for any period in of time. And we're just gonna slide this thing down into its home. I'm holding up the gasket with my, uh, my fingers here. And I'm gonna set this in approximately in the same position that it came out. And I'm not worried about the base, I'm worried about the uh, position of the rotor. That's all we're really focusing on right now. So I think we're off a tooth. There we go, it just fell in, but look at here. The rotor is not lined up with that little mark we made, so we're one tooth off in that direction. So what I need to do is pull it back out and slide it over one tooth. Now the problem is, is that the drive for the oil pump is not lining up. That's why uh, it falls all the way down in this position, but not in its correct position, which is right about, I think right about here. So I need to turn that oil pump drive ever so slightly counterclockwise to get it to line up with uh, the mark inside of the base of the distributor. We'll go in for the close up and I can show you that uh, oil pump drive down there see the slots right there see the slots on top of that shaft yeah there they are that little slot has to line up with the little slot on the bottom of the distributor and it is not so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna reach down in there with the screwdriver here get it on that slot and then rotate that distributor, I'm sorry, oil pump, just a wee little bit, except I cannot reach. It's far away. Well, hang on, we need more lumens in here. Let's see if I can't get some, uh, some better light down in that hole. This is hard to see. Let's see here, try again. I'm actually using the camera to look down so I can see what I'm trying to see here. There it is, see that? A little farther down, oh. Yeah, we'll just turn that slightly. Let's try it right there. Let's drop the distributor in again. Woo! Okay, attempt number two to get this thing to line up. Let's drop her back down and see if it lines up with its marks once it's fully seated. If not, I'll just have to do it again and again. Let's see, let's give it some, some wiggles here. I, it's almost in, I, I, it's so close. Gotta get that oil pump to line up. I think that was it, I think it's there, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's in, that's in all the way. Let's go in for our close up. I'll show you what's going on here. So we've got we've got our rotor button aligned with the little uh, mark right here. And the base of the distributor, you see her down there, that is flush with the top of the manifold. Now, that's all timed properly with the cam. So this is in time with the cam and the bottom of that shaft, that little, uh, little notch that's in the bottom of the shaft, that is in the groove on the oil pump. So everything is aligned and clocked properly. Now, 
we can go ahead and put that clamp back on and bolt that thing down. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna time this as long as I get everything in the correct position the first go around, which I, I think I have it, because I, I marked everything and I utilized my marks, so it should not be out of ignition timing. Uh, if it is, that's unfortunate, because I don't think I own a timing light anymore. I'll have to uh, have to purchase one. Well, like I said, our, our issue is not a timing problem. It's a uh, it's a stalling while hot problem. Why don't I have this thing set up properly? What did I do? Is that right? Is that it's flush, isn't it? Yeah, it just it didn't seem like it wanted to fit very well. Oh, we'll figure it out. Let's see if I can't maneuver this uh, little bolt in here to clamp this thing down. Uh, there it is. Come on. I can't drop this. This is a standard threaded bolt, and I don't think I have much in the line of standard hardware here. Yeah, begin threading now. Come on. I think it's going. Feels like it. And the clamp came off. Hang on, we're we're not doing so hot here. See, it's not just newer cars that have no space. This older car also has no space. It just comes with the territory, I suppose. I think that's about right. Let me try the other hand. There we go. Make some headway now. The threads are threading. Okay, that's bottomed out by hand. So what I want to do next, double check my reference marks. That one's good. And then this one right here, I have this pointed at that little mark right there. So that's gonna time the base of the distributor. And that should be exactly where the old one was. So let's go ahead and put some clamping force down on this, uh, well, this clamp. And then we can put the cap and the wires back on, hit the key, and uh, see what it's gonna do. Beginning clamping now. There we go. We don't have to tighten this to the moon or anything, just a little bit of wrist action and we're good. Okay, I think that's about right. Let's pull this guy out. And let's go and fetch the uh, the new distributor cap that came with this new unit. Let me get my little red vacuum plug out of there. Do that. That's forever mine. And we'll plug the vacuum advance hose in right now. It's easy to forget. And I don't want to forget it. Good. Okay, distributor cap is coming in. I think that's gonna go right over here. Let's get all the wires and whatnot out of the way. Pull that guy up, pull that guy down. We need to plug this wire in. That one plugs in right here. Custom wiring job. And then I believe this one plugged in. Oh, hang on, I'm missing one. That one, need the big one. This guy plugs in right here. I think that's right. Begin plugging in now, please. Is it backwards? Yes, it was. There's a little tab in there. I had it backwards. Good thing that tab was there. There we go. Click. That's plugged in. And then one more little wire. That one goes in right over here. Flip this guy over. There we go. Okay, that one's in. Now I need to set this distributor down where it's uh, supposed to rest, and I think that's right about right there. These things sit very loose and sloppy-like. Now, one of the clamps on this side is already clamped in, so I need to get that out of the hole there. That's perfect. So let's start getting these guys clamped down. We push it down, unspring it, 
turn it and then that little hook just kind of hooks to the bottom of the unit. Very simple design. Exceptionally simple. But it worked. Mostly. Not the best uh, system to prevent water ingress, but it did work. And of course there's that one in the back. We can't see it, but I know it's there. Spin this guy around and clamp you in next. Slippage. Okay, that one is also clamped into place. Now, if we just need to get the wires back on, throw the uh, air cleaner back on, then we can start into the engine. Let's figure out which one of these goes where they go. Remember, I had them numbered, right? Sort of. I'm totally gonna be completely wrong on this and I'm gonna have to look up the chart, guaranteed. Guaranteed. In fact, I can't even find some of the other wires. What'd I do with them? Ah, here we go. Let's find number one first. Yeah, that was two. I had two right there. Uh, seven went there. I don't remember which one that is. Where's one? What did I do with one? Is that one? This is one. Yep. So one. That one started here. Click that in. Then I had two. Three dots became number three. Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Four, five, and then this one is six. That one goes there. Seven was there, because I wrote seven on it. This one was, well that one's got three dots on it too. Uh-oh. Hang on, I forgot. There's eight, I know that's correct. Is that four dots or five dots? I uh, remember. It goes like this. This is correct. And if it's not, we're gonna find out real quick, won't we? Okay. Wires are now wired. Units bolted down. Vacuum advances on. Connectors are connected. It should be in time. Let's bump the key and restarting the engine. So it's either right or it's not. And I hope it's right. Starting. So far, so good. It started quickly, it runs well. Let's go ahead, get our air cleaner and everything back together, get the tools out of here, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out on the road, make sure it's got plenty of power, and we're gonna make sure that uh, it's not backfiring or anything, indicating it's possibly out of ignition timing, which uh, I don't believe it is, because we got it referenced and uh, aligned near perfectly. So it's kind of a non-issue. But you never know. It, it might have come in and it's not in time. You just never know. If it isn't, well, all we have to do is take that uh, little base plate loose and then rotate the base of the distributor and uh, it'll change the ignition timing uh, of that unit. Like I said, I don't think we have to, but we might. Let's get the goodies out of here. We'll put them over here next to the transmission valve body. It's for a Nissan. It's broken. It's broken right here. Ding. Link to that video uh, right about here, right now. I'll also leave it down in this video's description uh, and in the comment section and anywhere else I possibly can think of because I'd like you to see that video. All right, let's get the drop lights out of here. Let's get this light out of here. Toys are all gone. Very good. Come on, light. You're coming with me. It's a long one. Here, I'll just hang that right here for now. Stay. Okie dokes. 
Nice and clean. Clean. Oh, my fender cover fell off. Oh, no. There we go. Closing the hood. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Mine. Beautiful. All right, climbing in. Let's back this thing out and hit the Road. See how she runs. Backing out the auto. Safety honks. You gonna go? It was in reverse, but not all the way in reverse. Okay, got it. Now it's gonna go. Backing up. Yay. El Camino. So I wonder if the AC works. Let's power on maximum. Very good. All right, let's hit the road, see how she runs. So far, so good. Feels pretty strong. AC's kind of, it's doing something, but I'm not getting any airflow. Hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit, okay. Whatever, as I can just roll the windows down. I'm always afraid to drive stuff like this, because if anything happens, these are harder to replace than, than, you know, like a Mazda or a Pontiac or an F-150 or something like that, or a Volkswagen. Not bad, feels good, I like it. I don't hear any pinging or spark knock or anything. Let's go over the bridge and do some wide open throttle real quick, just to make sure it doesn't, uh, reignite itself to death or anything if it does I, I may want to go ahead and adjust uh, timing back just a little bit like I said I don't have a timing light that's a uh, antiquated technology it's like trying to play uh, Space Invaders on Atari and something's not right yeah power was a little low it's out of time I tried to give it like three quarters throttle when I went to pull out and it just kind of kind of fell on its face a little bit. I didn't like that. Let's go adjust this up some. Free, you shouldn't be doing that without a timing light. It's okay. I can do it. It'll be okay. See, back in the high school days when this was all the stuff we had, what we used to do was have someone come inside of the cabin. Uh, power brake it so they'd have a foot on the brake they'd have it in drive and they would give it some throttle hold it about like um, say 15 1800 rpm and then you'd go down below and adjust the distributor based on how much torque that engine was putting out so you would adjust it you'd advance it until it torqued up some and then once you uh, once you advanced it to a point where torque fell off and you'd see the engine visually kind of slack back off against the mounts you'd uh, adjust it back and then back just a little bit more and then lock it in and that was usually like right on absolutely perfect that's how we used to do it back when we didn't have timing lights and tools and uh and things like that so i'm uh i'm literally doing this kind of the old school high school method it's gonna work oh and by the way nobody send me a timing light don't do it just because i don't have one doesn't mean i need one please do not send me a timing light i don't uh i don't need one i mean i could use one right now but this is like the first uh carbureted distributed car that I've worked on in a decade so if I had a timing light it would just sit away for like another decade so no please nobody Amazon me a timing light don't want it don't need it don't do it please thank you yeah I can hear a couple little pings now a little bit of spark knock it's a uh, too far advanced yeah, let's see if I can demonstrate the lack of power right here. So green light, and if I'm in the throttle, it doesn't want to go. Oh, it's going to die. Move over, blue car. I'm driving an El Camino. Okie dokes, back into the service stall. What was that? Ran over a McDonald's cup. Back into the service stall. Check that out, that doge thing is gone. There's now more space, and I like more space. Soon I will create even more space. All right, parking the auto, unclick it. Here we go. Re-poppening the hood. Okay, let's see here. Let's get back under the bonnet. 
Uh, there it is. And I need to get my timing tool. Where's my distributor wrench? No, 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 it's over there. Yeah, wrench and a light, that's what we need. Okay, back under the hood. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna break that, uh, that little plant bolt loose one more time. If I can see it, if I can barely see it. Okay, I got a bite on it. Let's go ahead and crack that guy loose. Not so loose where it can move by itself. I just need to make it loose enough where I can rotate the face of the distributor. I hope you can hear me, the fan's going. Bit more. There we go. So now, right about there. We lock it down again. I'll do a snap throttle check first. If it responds instantly with the snap throttle, we'll go out and drive it again. If not, I'll adjust it some more. There we go. See what it does. Again, there. All right, attempt number two to go wide open throttle and make sure that our spark knock is gone. I haven't heard it yet. Feels pretty good. Yeah, no pings under load. That's what I'm looking for. Nice. We're good. There we go. Illegal passing. I departed the lane. Oh no. Hey, another sheriff. All right, guys. I'm headed back to the shop. I'm all done with this thing for what I said I was going to do. Uh, distributor swapped out. Um, it didn't do that stalling thing that I heard that it does. But again, my, my guy just wanted me to drop this part in. And uh, I think he's gonna warranty the one that I pulled out or uh, this was supposed to have been the uh, the case study to see if this fixed the problem uh, that it had, which I, again, I believe was a, a hot restart. Um, we're gonna go back and check on a hot restart real quick. Uh, if it is, or if it does, if that problem does present itself, then I think that the, my guy was going to change out some other ignition components, um, but I'm not 100% certain on it. Uh, anyway, that is, uh, like I said, all that I'm going to do on this uh, particular El Camino for the time being. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out right about now. And uh, as always, I will do such things by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Uh, drop me a like button while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day in a transmission. Oh, by the way, uh, don't be a Karen in a Mercedes. Just because people didn't go fast enough doesn't mean that you need to be honking at them because that doesn't really change anything. So good job, Karen. Look at you sitting at that red light. Look at you. You didn't go anywhere. They're special. I hope that car sits there for an hour. Ruin your day. I met a Karen at the gas pump today, actually. Uh, I guess it's story time. I, I pulled up with my dump trailer uh, to the gas station and I needed to get fuel in my auxiliary tank to refuel some uh, equipment. And the, all the back spaces were vacant and I pulled into I pulled into a space and there was a car in front of me at the other fuel island. Uh, they didn't have the gas pump out, so I figured they were on their way out. So I pulled up behind them, you know, and I had a trailer, so I kind of scooched in. And I see the person looking at me in the mirror. They're, they're looking and they just kind of sat there 
So uh, me not wanting to be confrontational with the air horn or anything, I didn't uh, I didn't really press the issue. I cleaned out some stuff in the truck, but the uh, the customer or the the customer the Karen just kept sitting there. And next thing I know, uh, the Karen comes out and starts opening up their doors, and they're holding like this little dog thing, and they start emptying trash out. They get done with all the trash. They put the dog back on the driver's seat. Bought two dollars worth of gas went inside got some food and then came back out and sat in their car at the fuel island and ate their food with their dog in their lap and she kept staring at me like in the mirror like i'm just sitting there and i'm like are we gonna go what are we gonna do so i waited for like 30 minutes just to get you know 60 gallons worth of fuel now i know what you're thinking why don't you just leave and back up and uh, the reason for such things is i had my dump trailer behind me and I had some I think they're 22 foot 10 by 10 pieces of wood and those were sticking out of the back now there was a line of vehicles trying to get into the other fuel pumps behind me so I couldn't really back up because all the cars were stacked up waiting on the next pump and the next one then the next one then the next one so I was stuck behind a dog toting lunch eating Karen who decided that the fuel island was a great place for a picnic and a great place uh, to clean their car out so i had a karen encounter today so i'm really salty when it comes to karens and i don't like them right now because they are rude and i i already knew that had i uh had I made an attempt to communicate my frustration with this karen uh, we would have been making a different video today so i just kind of sat there and just ate it while i waited for them to get out of the way and rejoin society so that's my Karen today. Uh, I guess story time will conclude with my words of wisdom and that is do not sit at the fuel island at the gas station. That is not a parking space. That's not where you pull up so you can walk inside. That's not where you clean your trash out if you're not pumping fuel. That's the only thing you should be doing there is pumping gasoline. Uh, I will give one exception to that rule and that is people with a trailer. Oh, by the way, um, if there's only one diesel pump and you're not buying diesel, try to not sit at that diesel pump, please. And if gas stations are very, very busy and you buy gas, then pull up into a parking space and let somebody else have the pump. Be a decent human being, please. Thank you. That will end my rant. See you guys later. I can see you in a transmission. Oh wait, I forgot. Powering down. Pew. Ooh, automatic door locks. Let's try that again. Aha! Automatic door locks.